Hi guys, this is me, Rusty78609, 9.53 a.m. December the 29th, 2016, 55 degrees. And I'm going to do something a little different this morning. I'm going to talk about a topic that people never talk about. It's coming up on the end of a year. <clears throat> and everybody talks about New Year. Well, what I'm thinking about, I'm 71 years old, and I don't know if you recognize this place yet, but this is a very large cemetery near Marble Falls, Texas, okay? And this is where you go at the end of your life. Not the end of the year, but the end of your life. That's where some of you go, okay? Notice there's nobody here but me, all right? That's one thing you'll notice. Now, those flowers that you see on the graves are plastic, okay? And they're put here by the perpetual care people that have a little office here, and they have some people that mow the grass, and whenever you buy your burial plot, you get, well, those are vaults on the right. These concrete-looking things, those are vaults, okay? Very expensive. And uh, <clears throat> kind of like the pyramids. Those would be kind of what you would call mini pyramids. And uh, a lot of vanity involved in death. You know, a lot of people want to have a fancy tombstone and all that stuff. And uh, it says flowers for vases available in office. So if you need some flowers, you forgot them, you just go up to the office and they just happen to have some for sale. But one of the least planned, I used to be a CPA. I was one for like 20 plus years. And one of the least planned for events in people's lives was death. One of the most certain things in life is death. Now, I don't care what religion you are. I don't care if you believe you're going to go to heaven, hell, or what. That don't mean it's not part of this story. The part of this story is, is knowing that death is around us every day. Now, see, there's some more vaults, and they've got little angels. Now, what the hell does an angel do? God Almighty. I mean, do you believe there's actually people with wings on their back? Get out of here. But anyway, you know, that made them feel that that was closure for that family. That that uh, that was. Uh, and here's a new one up here. There, here's somebody just fixing to have a funeral today. They got the hole dug and uh, they do it with a backhoe, by the way. They don't do it with shovels. They got the tent set up and the chairs and they have a huge cross here on the left. And this is the way we do it in the USA, right here. You see these cute little flowers and the little burial plots. And notice, have you seen anybody yet? Huh? Uh, uh, alive. Huh? But none. None. So, folks, let me tell you. Whenever 30 days after you die, you're not even a good memory anymore, okay? And something else about this place, this property is primo, okay? This property would sell for a lot of money, I'm telling you it would. And uh, don't think somebody ain't thinking about digging up all these coffins and taking them somewhere. <laughs> but having said all that, how do you prepare for the end of your life? Not the end of a year, like we got this one ending. How do you prepare? What do you do? Well, make a list of the things you want done. You know, if you want to be cremated, write it down and beat it into your family before you die. I'm going to be cremated, and I do not care what my children, my two boys, do with the ashes. I, my oldest boy, I've already told him, dump it in the backyard where I live right now. If I'm still living there, if I'm not, throw it in the trash. I don't give a shit. I know that sounds cold, but it's my way of thinking. Because look around you. Do I want to be buried here and have my kids feeling guilty because they didn't come visit grandpa or daddy out here with these phony ass flowers. No, I don't want any of that crap. How embarrassing. But anyway, there are those that do. Are they wrong? No, that is their choice. My choice is different. Now they got one over here on the right. I'll try to show you. 
this this one over here, I don't know how good you can see it. Maybe you can see it. But it's got a little butterfly. It's got a little cowboy hat hanging in a tree. Got the little bush all, and the name of that family is Pennington. All right. But anyway, this is where the dead people go. Most of the most of these are Christians, okay? I doubt that there's any Muslims in this graveyard. I doubt it. And, uh, you know, if you think that these people are going to rise up out of... Now, some of those people are not only buried in a coffin, they are, they are surrounded by a copper vault, all right? Now, if you think they can get out of that, then I don't know if any of y'all remember the great escape artist Houdini, then these people would make Houdini look like Ned in the first reader, all right? But for those of you that are religious and believe in that, that's wonderful, you know? I think it, that's fine. If that gives you peace of mind, that's fine. I know I'll get a lot of hate mail because I don't believe in all this crap, but that's fine. I can deal with it. I just like to talk about it. Why? Because I think other people ought to think about it. Think. 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 T-H-I-M-K. Think. But having said all that, here's another thought. Let's just say that you're 70 years old, male or female. You've been married for 50 years, okay? And one of you dies, and then you're the one left, all right? What do you do? Do you go back to your old home where all the memories are all hanging around there like skeletons hanging around in the air? I would for a while, just long enough to get rid of it. That's a fact. I'd cut it. It'd be just like reading the book and I finished that book. I would close it, put that book in the memories of my mind and get another book and start a new life. Get busy living, living. Dead is dead, dead. No, it's easier said than done, but I have to tell you, transitioning from a bricks and mortar home to living in a 19 foot RV is fairly traumatic, okay, or can be. It's a pretty damn good transition to get rid of all that stuff that won't fit in an RV and go live in it. Well, I can tell you right now that transitioning from a home with two people in it to a home with one person in it is difficult. And if you stay in that home, all you're going to do is, is be sad because everything is going to remind you of something. All right. And there's going to be moments that you're just going to break down and bawl your little eyes out for no reason. The solution is get busy living. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is find you, start looking at other homes. Find you a smaller place or whatever you think you might want to live in, in a, either in a, another town or wherever. Just change, change, start changing. Start transitioning, start immediately making lists, thinking about well, I'll have to get new furniture. Absolutely get new furniture. Get new everything if you have to. I mean, get new underwear. Every damn thing. Ever, anything that reminds you of the past. Remember the book you put away in your mind? That's all you need to put away. The rest of that crap, give it away. You got, if you got kids, let them have it. If they want to hang on to those memories, let them. But for me... Me, I'm talking about me, not you. Me, if I was the sole surviving spouse and I had been married for a long, 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 long time, here's the grave diggers that got the Mexicans in the truck. They're the grave diggers, okay? They got, they got to be here. What's going on, Mac? Yep. But be that as it may, there was a movie called the Shawshank Redemption. Y'all may remember it. 
And in there, one of the old prisoners got out. He was a librarian, I think, in the prison. Anyway, he ended up, he couldn't adapt to civilian life or being free, and he hung himself. <clears throat> anyway, apparently there was a saying there in that apartment where he lived, get busy living or get busy dying. Well, folks, your choice. Look around here. Okay, here it is. I'm going to go through it one more time so you get a good look at this cemetery. There must be three or four thousand people buried here, and there ain't a soul here except the grave digger. Okay? Think about it. Think about it. Not a soul. There's nobody here mourning these people. There's no children out here. And if it wasn't for the perpetual care putting those plastic flowers out, they wouldn't be there. And if it wasn't for them mowing it, it'd be grown up and you wouldn't even know this was a cemetery. And that is the total truth. So, now I know this is a morbid video, but, you know, a little morbidity. You got to face the reality of your mortality. You really do. We are mortal. We will freaking die. When? That you don't know. In fact, what if you did know? What if you knew the exact moment you were going to die? Would that be better or would that be worse? I think it would be worse. But plan for your death. Okay, plan. I've got, at least I've got a little plan. It ain't great. You know, I just gave everything to my oldest boy and that's it. I don't have much. But I made a list of things that needed to be done. You know, like cancel the phone service, you know, turn off the water, certain, you know, garbage and all that stuff. Because those are the things that in the heat of the battle or in the moment of sadness that you overlook that cost you money. Not that I'm worried about it after I'm dead, but why not save a few nickels for the next generation and, uh, you know, give them a list, you know. And, and if you have stuff, you know, a lot of stuff like furniture and, and antiques, and stuff that has value don't just say you're gonna leave it to the children that ain't gonna get it you got to say which child gets exactly what item because if you don't there will be a war between your children over the most expensive items particularly when it comes to jewelry I guarantee you it will be and it will cause your family your children to split up and be angry with one another for the rest of their lives so take an hour or less, a pencil and pad, write it down. Table goes to Betty, chairs go to this, antique vase goes to this, pots, whatever you got. Just write it down. Shit. Won't take long, I guarantee you, and then you'll be totally relieved. And then make a note on your calendar, and once a year, kind of update it. I do it every time, that every year. This time of the year, I've got a little note. I go through and look at it and update it because things change, okay? But anyway, aren't y'all glad I came up with this video? <laughs> but it, it's really, you got to think about it. You know, I'm 71, so of course I'm a little bit closer to the, uh, the other side <clears throat> than most of you. And I understand that. For you people that are in your 30s and 40s, you're not thinking about that. But I tell you what you should be thinking about if you got parents, is uh, advising them and say, look, mom, dad, you know, there's four of us kids or three of us kids or two of us kids. Why don't you do this? Sit down and make you a list of exactly how you want to divide this stuff up if something happens to you, because it will. You know, they're going to die. That's it. Okay? So, the first step is to know what happens after you die after death what do you have to do what forms have to be filed you, know, you got to get a death certificate and when you get that from the funeral home don't get one even though they charge you i don't know several dollars for the first one and then the copies aren't very much but you know get you 10 of them why because you never know what you're going to need them for social security is going to need one some retirement plan is going to need another one somebody's going to need another one so get a few of them you'll never regret it and uh, but be that as it may this is again rusty 78609 the grim reaper 
<laughs> it's a grim reaper finishing out the year. But really, guys, I, I, in, in, a, in a lighter moment, it's true. You got to know that. So, I don't know how long this has gone on, probably longer than I wanted it to, but really, you know, cremation is cheap, too. That's another thing. You know, my father was buried and mother, too. But my father's funeral was very expensive. I mean, it, 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 he was in a wonderful casket with a uh, copper wall. And uh, here comes the hearse with one mourner. <laughs> There's Rusty's funeral. Got one, one car. <laughs> That's probably a creditor. And anyway. But anyway, his funeral was over $10,000. That was way back when. That was 50 years ago. And uh, I often thought about that because you know we weren't we certainly weren't wealthy. But for me, cremation, no urn, no nothing, no nothing. Why? Because that's just kind of guy I am. That's all. Makes it easy. As far as uh, having a memorial service, new. Nope. No way. No way. If they didn't see me when I'm alive, I damn sure ain't gonna worry about them seeing them after I'm dead. Shit. Remember I went to a funeral in Kennedy, Texas one time. This old woman, uh, she was a wealthy rancher's wife. He died, he predeceased her, but she died. And I went down to the funeral because I knew him. I knew the son. We graduated from high school together. And anyway, I don't know why they do this, but whenever at the end of the funeral, you got to all walk by the casket and look at the body. I mean, if that's not the most morbid thing you can think of, is walking by and looking at a dead body that's been made up by a damn, what do they call them? I don't remember the people that make up the dead bodies. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, she had a lipstick and all kinds of shit. <coughs> a nice dress. And I remember these ladies that were lying in front of me, they said, oh, doesn't she just look so nice? And I thought, well, you bitches, if you'd have told her that when she was alive, she'd probably still be here. <laughs> but they all hated her because she was rich. And she, was, she drank a lot. And uh, that didn't go good with the Christian Baptists, I promise you. And there were a lot of them in my hometown. Yep, but anyway, so guys, think about not only the end of this year, Think about the end of your years. I mean, a New Year's, a good thing to do at New Year's, update your will. What if you don't have one? I'll tell you how to do one damn cheap and damn simple. In Texas, anyway, it's valid. It may be in every state. All you need is uh, two witnesses with notarized signatures on a document stating down your wishes you know you just say this is my last will and testament this supersedes all wills and testaments ever made by me put a date on it write down what you want mine's very simple i just left everything to my oldest boy and that's the end of that shit. and i got two notarized signatures i got one copy at home one copy in a safe deposit box and i've told my son about it so he knows it's not going to be a surprise i don't have anything anyway so it's not a big issue as far, as far as filing an estate tax return, you don't have to do that if your estate is under, I don't know, a million bucks now. And, uh, you know, so get some advice on all that stuff and get it done. You know, don't put it off, get it done. So anyway, that's my end of the year. Not quite yet, but end of, almost, end of today, I guess. But I just happened to think of that. I got up this morning. Of course, I did that other video. It may be up now. But, but anyway, guys, think about your future and if you have if you're fixing to be a widow or a widower think about what i said man don't don't look at it as an end look at it as a beginning i mean this is a chance to just close that book no it, that doesn't mean anything ugly like you know i'm just never going to think about it. no no just put all those memories that are in that one book about that individual in, in, the, in the memories of your mind. You can go back and look at it every now and then. You'll have it on the shelf and you can pull it out and go down memory lane anytime you choose to. But start a new book. Buy, start thinking about new furniture, a new home, uh, 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 you know, a new this, a new that. Change, change, change. You'll get excited about life. You'll get down. Get out, get out of that rut. 
climb up out of that. You know, we're trained to be miserable at death. You know, that's why they have mourners. You know, they, people used to go into mourning, and women used to have to wear black for a whole year. You know, and uh, you know, you go to a funeral, and everybody. You, know, you, you ever go to a funeral where there's people telling jokes and laughing? Not very damn often. You know, maybe a Jewish funeral, maybe, but different. But be that as it may, I'll end this video. And you guys have a great day. Now that now that I've well, I don't know. You should be in a good mood. You, you know, I'm actually in a good mood. I don't know why the Grim Reaper speaks. But anyway, thumbs up, guys. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye bye. Buy American made when you can. Drink plenty of water. Take deep breaths. Walk for exercise. Stretch. Do all that good stuff. And do your update your will and be specific. You know. This item goes to, this item goes to so-and-so. You know, put a name on it. So that way, when you die, somebody picks up that will, it, all the bullshit's out, you know? It's over. No fighting, no infighting, no arguing, period. Even a bank account, you know, say, look, whatever's in there, 50% goes to so-and-so, 20, 20, 20, you know, whatever you want to do. That's it. You don't have to put a number on it, put a percentage. You know, that way, no matter what's in there, they can divide it up according to the percentages that you stated up front. Cut the crap out. Anyway, enjoy. Adios. Bye-bye.